Time and time again, you have heard people say, don't use an OLED as a computer monitor. Well, with the LG G2, you might not have to worry about burning much longer. What do I mean by that? Well, in this video, I'll talk about all of that and much more as we go behind the scenes on my whole entire productivity desk setup. Let's get into it. This is the E7 desk and it's made by FlexiSpot who was kind enough to sponsor today's video. I gotta say I love the way this desk looks. The bamboo top is just so clean. I am definitely impressed. Now if you've never heard of FlexiSpot, they make a variety of home office products including the standing desk. Now this model, the E7, is a super versatile desk that you can program to either lower which will accommodate a sitting position or raise to accommodate a standing position. This can be helpful with your posture which can be beneficial beneficial to your health overall. Now if you're worried about how much the desk can hold, well don't because it can hold up to 355 pounds. So whatever you want to put on top of the desk for your work or gaming space, you can. And best of all, there's so many great ways to customize this desk to fit your personal style. Now if you guys are interested in purchasing your own FlexiSpot desk, I have a special discount code in the description below. Thank you again to FlexiSpot for sponsoring this video. Now let's talk about the rest of the setup. Okay, so the computer that I'll be using in this video is going to be the M1 Mac Mini. This is a very capable computer for the price. You can get something like this for $499 when it's on sale, which is what I paid. And to be honest with you, it blows away my old iMac, which was $2,300 in 2017. Kind of ridiculous. But I just love the price for performance that you get with these M1 Macs. And I'm looking to go to an M1 Pro or M1 Max later on because I do really like the Mac ecosystem when it comes to editing videos and editing music. I'm not gonna lie though, I do miss gaming on a desktop and I will be getting a desktop gaming PC pretty soon. So stay tuned for that. Let me talk about some of the accessories that I use. Now my mouse is a Razer Basilisk Hyperspeed probably the best mouse that I've ever owned for the fact that it takes one AA battery, it's wireless, it's lightweight, and it was $30. Like, I can't complain about any of that stuff. So this device right next to the Mac Mini M1 is the Universal Audio Aero. This is a audio interface. This is what I plug my microphone into, and pretty much this makes my microphone sound better than it actually is. Now this is a really great microphone, it's the Shure SM7B, but when you hook it up to something like the Universal Audio Aero, you are going to get way better results because you have things like DSP effects that will make the microphone sound that much better. You can use either a compressor or equalization. If you're really serious about your audio, I highly recommend picking this up, especially if you're somebody who creates music. Now moving on to the next piece of hardware in my setup, we have the studio monitors, which are the PreSonus Aeris right here. Um, these are really great, to be honest with you. I couldn't mix music without these, and I really couldn't produce music without these. So I highly recommend these monitors if you need a pair of studio monitors. Okay, so this next thing I wanna show you is how to use the G2 with custom resolutions on a Mac. So the way that you're gonna wanna go about doing this is you open up your system settings, Next, navigate to the display, then you'll see that on display, there's options for default for display and scaled. From here, you're going to want to hold down the option key and select scaled. Then you'll see there's a list of resolutions to select from. Choose 2560 by 1440 and then you can unlock the 5K retina mode. You're also having the option to do 3008 by 1692. If you select that, that will give you the 6K retina display. I think it's pretty cool that you're able to use these options and they work really good. Honestly, if you look at the way that text is scaling, you can zoom in on the text very, very close and it's always going to be smooth no matter what. That is why I actually really like this TV with uh, the Mac because it pairs very well. All right, so I promised I would talk about the G2 as a computer monitor and my experience with it. And I gotta say, going from the 55 inch G2 from the 48 inch C1 was crazy different. Uh, not only was that size difference more than I thought, but just having it on display, it is a brighter display. And it also feels like it doesn't dim down as fast. Now, this may be because of the heatsink. 
but it does still dim down, which is a downside to using an OLED as a computer monitor. So those of you that like to crank up the brightness on your monitors, you're going to expect some dimness from time to time when you are sitting on a static window. The other downside is burning, right? We're concerned about burning when we're using an LG OLED as a computer monitor. Now, the C1 that I have has had no issues with that whatsoever, and I've been using that since around November. And really, I've been using it as a daily driver productivity display for a very long time. So the concern is there for sure. I'd be lying if I said I wasn't concerned about the C1 eventually burning in because of the amount of work that I put in on the C1. I'm using it with Ableton Live, DaVinci Resolve, all kinds of things where the UI is very static all the time and my editing windows are very constant and always around the same place. So over time, that could be an issue, which is why I'm thinking maybe the G2 long term is the better answer. The G2 actually comes with a five year panel warranty. Now, because of that, it might be a good reason to use that as a main display because you can really stress out the panel as much as you want. And if something ever does go wrong with it, you do have that five year warranty to fall back on with the panel. Now, there's a lot of question marks regarding how they're going to react to you using it as a computer monitor, but nothing in their warranty says that you can't. So maybe this is the perfect display for a computer monitor if you're thinking about getting an OLED display. Now the size, that's the big difference. That's the thing people are concerned about. How do you use this big of a monitor in front of your face the whole entire time? If you get a desk set up and you also get a mounted stand right behind your desk, I think that's the best way to go about doing it. You wanna give yourself a lot of depth between yourself and the monitor. So using it on a desk setup is very possible but you really won't want to put it on the desktop itself. You're going to want to put this on like a rolling stand or mount it on the wall and then use a desk and just separate the desk a little bit from the wall until you're at a comfortable distance. That's what I did. And I really like this setup as much as I like the G2 for a computer monitor. I have to call out that the G1 is on sale right now. And I think that the G1 could probably serve a similar purpose, you know, having the five year warranty in place on that as well. But that is so much cheaper than the G2 right now. That said, the G2 is a really good option if you choose to use it. The build quality is really amazing, to be honest with you. I love the way this monitor looks um, and it feels just so sturdy when you take it and you move it to places. So I actually have it on a rolling stand, which I did put in the description below. If you guys are looking to use that rolling stand, I also put all the links for all the products that I'm using in the description below. If you guys find this video useful, please give a thumbs up. Consider subscribing for more content just like this. I have videos on the G2 versus other TVs, so check those out as well at the end of this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day, and I will see you in the next one.